Hello, this is Joe Savage from devitchkid.net, and today we are diving into our very first C++ tutorial. So, C++ is a general purpose programming language created in 1983, and these days it's mainly used for software development and for game development. But the chances are, if you found this video, you kind of already would know what it's about or what you're doing, so I think let's dive straight into it and let's get started. So, there are two main components when you're writing C++ code. Uh, there's a text editor, so somewhere to write your code, like Sublime Text or Notepad or TextEdit or Nano or whatever you want to use. And then importantly, something to compile your code. So uh, when we say C++ is a programming language, what we mean is you write the code and then you use an application that then compiles this code or kind of translates it into something the computer can read. So the computer can't actually read your C++ code. Uh, we actually need to translate it into something it can read, in this case, binary. So uh, you might want to like think about it like, you speak Spanish, the computer speaks German. If you speak Spanish to the computer, it's not going to understand. So you might want to write a bunch of Spanish, translate it into German, and then give it to the computer, because the computer can read German, or in this case, the computer can read binary, but it can't read C++ on its own. So um, there's also another way you can do this. So you can use these two separate components. Uh, you can just get a text editor. You can get a compiler like G++. So if you're on Linux, a common solution is to just use a text editor like Sublime Text, Get a compiler like uh, G++, and then you just save C++ files, which are files with the .cpp extension, uh, then compile them using terminal, and then you have your kind of final product, if you like. But another solution is to use this IDE, and an IDE is an integrated development environment. So uh, examples are Xcode for the Mac, or Visual C++ Express for Windows, or CodeBlox for Windows. And if you use these, this kind of combines the text editor, the compiler, a debugger, and a bunch of other tools into one application package. So you can kind of do everything from one application, which is very, very useful. So in this series, I'm going to be using Xcode, as you can see on the screen here. And we'll get into that in just a second. But the instructions should be the same for any platforms. And all the code we're going to be writing should work completely cross-platform. Um, especially, I mean, I've tried all of it with uh, with a number of compilers, with G++, I've done it through Xcode, and I've done it through um, through Visual C++ Express, uh, and I've tried it through these different IDEs, and it should all work fine. So let's get started. If you're using the separate component, just create a new file with the .cpp extension. Uh, if you're using an IDE, go ahead, there should be a button somewhere to create a new project, uh, just like that, and then create a new command line tool or console project, or something like that, it should be labeled, uh, just go ahead and create that. So next. Uh, in this case, let's just call it Hello World. Next, and let's create this application. So just create. And so we are here. So in Xcode, we have this little kind of project navigated to the left here, and we can just click in main.cpp, and this is our main C++ file. So uh, in a number of IDEs, it actually creates some code for you. You don't want this. We can write our own code. We don't need your help. So just delete any pre-generated code, uh, and then we should all be on the same page here. So guys using the separate components, you should have a new file, which looks kind of like this. Um, people using any IDEs, you should be in a file called main.cpp or something.cpp, where you can then write your code ready for compilation and running later. So let's actually start learning the C++ part of it. Now we kind of know how it works. So the first thing we're going to learn about are comments. Now comments are things that don't affect the way your code runs. So when the compiler goes through your code, it ignores any comments, but they're just for your personal usage or if you're sharing your code with people or if you're sharing your code with a team uh, for their usage so they can read it. So in this case, we're just going to create a comment at the start here, which says who wrote the program and I guess the purpose of the program as well. So single line comments, so comments which only take place on a single line in C++ can be accomplished via a double forward slash and then typing whatever you want. So this is a single line comment. That's a single line comment, just like that. It doesn't go across multiple lines. If you go on the next line and type something, this something is interpreted as real code, which is why you can see it's popped up. Oh, I think you got a problem here, boss. Um, so that's a single line comment, and then multi line comments are accomplished by doing a forward slash and then an asterisk, and then when you want to stop it, an asterisk and then a forward slash. So anything in here, and that can span across multiple lines, but again, anything outside of that, like this, that's going to be interpreted as code, which is why, again, we have this error. Uh, let's just use a single line comment for now, just at the top of the file, uh, and let's just say this program was created by Joe Savage. That'll do. Okay, next line. So let's actually now start thinking about what kind of functionality you want this to have. So in this case, uh, the purpose of this application is just going to be to output some basic text to the screen. So the very first thing we need to do this is we need to enable the functionality which allows us to output text to the screen. 
Now, in C++, there are these things called includes, and that basically means, hey, you know you know this file over here? Can you just kind of bring that to me and just put that in here? So in this case, we need to include the file which has the capabilities to output data to the screen and to get input from the user because they happen to be stored in the same file, even though we're not going to be dealing with input in this tutorial. So uh, we do this by doing a hash and then writing include and then the name of the file. So in this case, the file is called IO stream, and we put that in angle brackets in this case. So uh, we'll explain why they're in angle brackets in a later tutorial, but pretty much uh, this stands for input output stream, uh, and that has all the stuff we need to output text to the screen, which is the purpose of this program. So we need this to be in here for that functionality. Okay, and that's all for that line. Let's go down a couple lines, and the next thing we need to do is to use a certain namespace. Now this is often confusing for beginners because it kind of requires a little bit of explanation. Um, so you might not fully understand this, but don't worry about it too much. Basically, inside header files uh, in C++, things are often stored in what are called namespaces. Uh, and you think of these kind of like separate drawers. So uh, let's say if we include something else, uh, if we went include something else, just like that. That doesn't exist, and this is actually a part of our program. This is just to demonstrate the concept. If we had included iostream and something else, and let's say there was something called Bob in iostream, and there was something called Bob in something else, uh, and we tried to reference Bob in our code, uh, there'd be kind of a conflict there. It'd go, whoa, where do I look? Do I, am I supposed to look in iostream or something else, or what do you want? Uh, and for this reason, stuff is stored in these different drawers. So you can say, hey, look for Bob that's in this drawer. And it goes, oh, got him. Bob's in this drawer. Yes, I found him. I'm going to use that Bob. This is, a, this is a really kind of crazy example, but the point is stuff in iostream generally is stored inside the std namespace and inside the other standard C++ header files, um, you'll also find that stuff is generally in the std namespace. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to say, hey, if in doubt, look in the std namespace because it's probably there. So we do that by just typing the word using and then namespace and then std. So we're going to just go, okay, when we reference stuff in iostream, because that's the only header we have, or whenever, just generally, um, just assume it's in the standard namespace, because it's probably in there. And then what we have to do, we can say, hey, it's got it's got an error here. Um, what does it say? It goes, hey, expected semicolon. <laughs> so it's actually being very clever here. It knows what we've missed out. Now, in C++, when you write kind of a command, or you write a line of code, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a line, but when you want to end a statement or you want to end something, you do this by putting a semicolon. So in this case, we're saying, okay, use the namespace std when in doubt, end the line. So that's, we're finished doing the namespace, bam. Semicolon basically just means we've finished doing what we're doing there. And okay, let's go down a couple more lines. And now we need a point of entry for our program. So this is all well and good so far. We have the functionality to output data. Um, we know where to look in that file. We need some way to start, so where's our program going to start when it runs? We need to specify where it's going to start. So we do this by writing what's called a main function. So uh, a function in C++ is just a named portion of code, and in C++ all functions have to have a type to them. Now you may not quite understand why this is yet, but I'm sure you'll understand it in future. Uh, but essentially the main function is usually an int function, and this means it has to return an integer. Again, you probably don't understand that yet, don't worry about it right now. So integer is represented through the word int, and then we type the name of this portion of code, because obviously functions are just named portion of code. So in this case, I'm going to call it main, uh, because the point of entry of a C++ program is always called main. That's just what it is. Uh, and then we need some empty brackets, some empty parentheses here. Don't worry about what they're for yet. We're going to talk about them in future. Some people put stuff in here uh, when you're starting out, but we're not going to do that. It just complicates things for now. And then we're just going to have some curly brackets. And everything inside these curly brackets uh, is going to be what's inside this named piece of code called main. Uh, while we're talking about this, uh, anything which is inside curly brackets in C++ generally is indented. So in this case, we have a tab space here. It's automatically done it for us because it's going, hey, you're inside main now. Uh, if you want to show that visually, you can have a tab space. So to represent kind of when you're glancing at the code, hey, we're inside main here. Uh, so code like here. If you're just glancing at it, you can see very, very simply that it's inside of this named function called main. Um, so because main is an integer, I kind of referenced this earlier, we also have to return zero. Now, 
basically we're using zero because it's an integer which is the type of the function and return zero in this case basically just means hey we finished uh, our main function and we finished it without any errors so we want this to be the final thing in our main function don't worry too much about the return zero or the int right now we're going to talk about them in great detail in future uh, but pretty much it just needs a type and that's generally an integer and we need to return something because it's this integer type uh, and we're going to return zero to show there are no errors okay okay so the first thing in main is going to be the first thing that's executed when we start our program up because remember this is the entry point and anything inside these curly brackets is basically where it starts so the first thing we want to do here is we want to utilize something called C out which is how you write text to the screen uh, in iostream in this standard draw so which is what std stands for by the way I'm not sure if I pointed that out std stands for standard so uh, we want to write C out so that's just written C and then out and then we use these things called incitation operators. Okay, I was about for a sec, Joe. It's insertion operators, not incitation. I say incitation for the rest of this video. I mean insertion. I'm sorry. Okay, continue. Just be like, okay, this is the thing we want to output. And this is just a double opening angle bracket, just like that. So we're going, okay, output this thing, and then we need to specify something to output. Now, in C++, when you have a bunch of letters or a bunch of characters that are just kind of strung together, we call that a string, and that's represented uh, through double quotes. So we can just be like, boop, like that. This thingy here is a string, and we can write any combination of letters and numbers we want inside of that, uh, and that kind of just functions as text. So if we just say, hello, this is written from a C++ program. Brilliant. And then we can just use a semicolon to end the line. So we go, okay, you see out, um, and we want to output this string here. So this thing wrapped in double quotes, uh, and then just, we're done. That's all we want to do. Okay, so we can we can now just save this. If you're using the two separate components, um, you've just written this in a CPP file, you might want to just Google how to compile things using your compiler. So it's pretty simple with G++, you just need to write a line in terminal, and it should compile it down for you. Um, but if you're using an IDE, it should be very, very simple. There should be like a big button that says run or debug or something. And just click that and that should run your code for you. So let's just see if this works. Um, let's just click run. And it says down here, hello, this is written from a C++ program. Now, um, I should probably quickly mention, if you're using Visual C++ Express, a black window might just pop up and then go back down. Um, I think there might be something in settings you can actually get so it doesn't pop back down, uh, but we haven't actually got anything which kind of pauses the program, and the way that it executes on Windows often is that it pops up in a box, and then when it's done, it closes. Um, but in, in most IDEs, or at least some IDEs, uh, you should expect the text to just come up in a window like this. So we can see, hello, this is written from a C++ program. Our program worked. That's brilliant. Uh, but if you're having that pop-up box problem, just add a line to the end here. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can use the rather bad, uh, infamously bad, system pause, um, which essentially just pauses it so you can see the text. But I wouldn't really recommend doing that. Um, but if you have to do it, you have to do it for now. And we're just learning, so it's not a major kind of problem if you're using bad practices like that. Um, so C out, incitation operators, and then we specify the string to output, and it did it. Now, with C out, you can actually specify uh, multiple incitation operators, and it can output multiple things. So in this case, uh, if we wanted to kind of handle these strings separately, because remember, that's what we call them, strings, so we can go C out, incitation operators, hello, and then we can just go, hey, another set of incitation operators, so also output, this thing, and we can wrap that in quotes. So that's going to output exactly the same thing, it's going to just output hello exclamation mark, and then a space, and then this is written from a C++ program. Um, and there are also other data types apart from the string, uh, like numbers, for example. So uh, first of all, let's just show this works. Let's just run this. You can see exactly the same thing was outputted down here in our output window. Uh, but things like numbers, so if we want to say, hello, I am now we could just write a number in the string, but because we're just exploring the language, let's just see if we can just write a number uh, in the code like that. So we can say, hello, I am 300, and then let's do another set of incitation operators and write another string, years old, like that. So this should, theoretically, um, it's going to go, okay, what do I want to output? I want to output, first of all, this string, hello, I am space, and then we want to output this number, and you can write numbers in C++, so we have the string data type, we also have kind of various number data types. Uh, this one happens to be an integer, which we kind of talked about before, so this is a whole number that's so going, okay, output this string, output this whole number, and then output this space, and then this string. 
So we can just put a full stop here, save and run, and we should see, hello, I'm 300 years old. Brilliant, it works. Uh, so we could, in this case, it's pretty useless, we could just do it like this, and that would function exactly the same. You can see exactly the same output down here. Um, but because we're just exploring data types, we can use the integer as well as the string data type here. Uh, now, the last thing we're going to cover before we finish this tutorial is endl. Now, this is another thing stored in the std namespace in iostream, uh, and essentially we can just use it here to end the line. So we can just do another set of incitation operators and write endl to end the line. So now we say C out this string, this integer, this string, and then end the line. Now, note, because we're using the semicolon here and everything's kind of modular in C++, if we want to just copy paste this line, boop, oh look, it's now going to do it twice. It's going to go, okay, what do we want to do? We want to output this string, this integer, this string, and the line. Okay, right, we have finished that line. What's next? Oh, hey, we want to output. What do we want to output? We want to output this string, this integer, this line. So we can then do something else here. So this, oops, this outputs multiple things. OMG. So we can save and run. See, down here, we now have one line, and then because we ended the line, it goes into a new line. This, output multiple, this outputs multiple things, OMG. So we can actually do multiple of these, uh, and we can do any amount of these that you like. Because everything's so modular in C++, you can go see out one thing, see out another thing, and then if you want to see out more things, go ahead and do that. So that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to expect you to kind of know your uh, environment and know your IDE and the process of writing and compiling code um, by the next tutorial. So try and get familiar with that. Maybe make a few projects. Uh, try and get this structure in your mind. So just to quickly recap, we're including the IO stream header so we can output things to the screen. We're saying, if in doubt, look in the standard draw because that's usually where things are, or the standard namespace. We're then going, okay, we have a point of entry and it's called main because that's how things work in C++. Main is the point of entry. Uh, it's a type integer because it kind of has to be, and then we have these curly brackets here and say, okay, this is what's the this is what's inside this uh, named piece of code called main, uh, and then we indent this to show that it's uh, a part of a visual hierarchy, and we say, okay, first thing to do, output this string, this number, this string, and the line, and then output using C out, um, which is in the standard namespace, so it's looking there by default. So output this string, and the line, and then we're saying, okay, everything went fine, we're cool, return zero. So. That is the end of this tutorial. Uh, if you want to know anything about what I've talked about in this video, any more detail or such, uh, the related text tutorial should be in this video description if you're viewing on YouTube or if you're viewing on the website. The related text tutorial is just below where this video is embedded. So that is the end of this video, and have a nice day.